So hello everybody, Native Instruments sent me over a Control Mark III in a 61 key version and thanks for that, for supporting my work, even if Bitwig has now its own stock control script with it, but I will also support Reaper with that in an upcoming version of Driven by Moss. But this video is a first look at what you already can do with it, but also the Mark II version in Driven by Moss works absolutely nicely already with the Mark III as well as in the Reaper version. So until I release the new update, you can totally work with that version as well. And we can also have a quick look at that later. So some things which come in a box, it's, uh, it comes with a USB cable, but you absolutely need a USB-C charger and it's pretty picky with that. So you should get one which has some solid power for that. Otherwise you will get this notification that the device is low on power. And a USB 2 active hub is definitely not enough because I tried that as well and got this message too. After that, you need to activate the keyboard, which is also something new for me, that you need to put in this hardware serial number to get it working. And then you also need to install the hardware connection service via the native access software and then you are ready to go. But first let's have a look at the hardware. What is actually different? So the hardware is really, really nice. I have to say the keyboard is about the same quality as the previous one, even a little bit better for my taste. So definitely one of the better keyboards. And my opinion is that uh, the keyboard action nowadays is on most keyboards pretty, pretty bad. So this is definitely one of the nicer ones but it's also even a bit more expensive. Also great improvement. The wheels have no longer the coating, the rubberized coating on them, which tends to get sticky, which we saw with a lot of other devices as well. So it's great that this is metal. So the outside is metal, the inside is still plastic. And we also get this nice LED sign. So you see exactly where the wheels are positioned. And also a great change, which caused lots of issue in an old version is that they put now the ribbon above the wheels and not below. So if it was below previously, you always accidentally touched it. So having a look here at the previous model, you clearly see that these coated thingies are not that nice to touch. And here below that you had the ribbon and always accidentally touched it when trying to operate the wheels. Next things you see is the display is much bigger and you don't have the division with the two anymore. But you also notice we have less buttons, which we will get to in a second. Having a look at the back of the device shows that we have lots of connection for pedals, which is really a great thing if you want to go live with that thing. So sustain pedals, expression pedals, and even two more. This is a good thing to have. Also MIDI connectors are there. So hardware looks really pretty nice. And what also we need to mention is that the knobs are metal now and they feel much, much better than the previous plastic ones. The different knobs had different actions. Now they feel all very, very solid and metalish. Also the big knob here is a metal knob and feels really, really nice. Besides that, we still don't have any faders here and there's lots of space where they could have put additional controls. So what you could actually do with it is still limited. So which we'll also have a look in a second. What I forgot is here the LED strip for the light guide. This is also a huge improvement, I think, because it's much more subtle now. You don't see it if you look from there, you don't see it at all because it's hidden here a little bit below this surface here. It's lower, so you do not see that if you look, for example, from the audience on that. Yeah, it just looks a little bit more posh and not so like a Christmas tree. <laughs> And what also caused a lot of discussion is that there is no more machine support. I think the reason is pretty simple for that because to support that they had to have a lot of software layers, which always caused issues. I got so many reports from users of Driven by Mars that they cannot make it work. And it always was an issue with those different services which were installed and the different software layers. So all these things move now inside of the device while the Protocol stayed pretty identical. The logic is now inside the keyboard and no longer in the host PC or Mac or whatever you use for that. So now let's have a look at the script from Bitwig, so the stock script. As I said, 
also as with the previous thing the feature set is pretty limited there's not that much you can do with it you have the basic transport control so play record stop but even creating clips is a bit limited here they have also metronome you can do tap tempo toggle the loop point and enable override but only for the arranger as well under redo and that's basically it what you can do mixer wise it's only volume there we have a speed issue again you need to move it quite a lot to adjust the fader let's see how it works with uh, driven by moss later on if you can improve that there you can have mute on there mute and you can do solo as with the previous model but that's basically it you cannot toggle the record state which is really really sad and you cannot edit sends, so there's no way to change the send volume on a channel and navigation is still a bit tricky it's a mixture of problem with the bitwig api which still has an issue if you want to navigate here tracks as you see it's you need to be very very careful with going up or it will jump to the side as well so you see it's pretty easy that you miss navigate with this encoder also this encoder has no real feature for example i always use it for changing the play position but that's also not the case with that and there's still no edit possibility for plugins this depends again on native instruments to support this so bitwig has this little workaround for that you can go to the midi part this one edits now the currently selected device so let's select the drum machine so we can see that and these currently selected programs can then be edited here and as you see there's no pickup of the parameters and you don't see any names or any further information what's actually going on and also if you would change the page which is also not possible from here to change pages on the bitwig thing so this is more rather a crude workaround and not what you actually expect nowadays so which means we are now back here to the actual plugin so the main intention is to use the thing with native instruments software if you don't use it with native instruments plugins it's rather limited what you can do with the native instruments complete software plugin loaded you have now a little bit nicer navigation of what you can select so for example let's say we want to pick here a synth pad and we could do that here and something I noticed again navigation is yeah it takes a bit and as you see I stopped and it keeps on moving so the speed is a bit of problem as well I stopped here you know it's still doing things maybe zoom in a bit so here so you can see that better again I try to select the soon pad where is it here okay so we got it now we can have here pick anything soon padish why not that load it did it do something here we go so also there was no notification that something is happening So, and it's basically the same as with the previous metal. There's lots of space, which does absolutely nothing, <laughs> but you still have the eight knobs, but at least here you see what they actually are doing, but there is still nothing like, for example, that they could see an envelope or anything like that with that. Maybe let's try something else. I don't know which synth is that. Maybe let's get a product from Native Instruments, maybe Analog Dreams. <laughs> Let's pick that one. Again, we waiting to load. You don't see it from the device. You only see it on the PC. Are we done? Are we done? Still loading. Still loading. Still loading. We are done. Yay. Okay, so analog dreams here. So we have also the play assist here. You can do arpeggiators and you can have a scale restriction. So you can only play notes in the scale. How is it turned on? 
yeah, this took me a while to figure out how to actually <laughs> activate the ARP. You cannot simply press that button here. You need to use the shift key. I, I don't get why this is the case, but you need to do it with shift and then you can have, you can have the arpeggiator. And does it have a hold feature? Yeah, we can do hold here. So hold works directly without using shift. Okay, so this is working nicely. Same for the scale. Also with scale, you need to use shift. Yeah, you need to shift. Okay, could have been done easier, but nevertheless, this one is working. So I told you we can also have a look at the old Ruben Bamos version. Let's see if we have some more features of that. Oh, by the way, something that is really nice is that the track name is now scrolling. So this is really helpful. So we can see actually the full name. So this is Thanks, Native Instrument. That's actually a cool improvement. Yeah, so I have not driven by Moss with the Control Mark II implementation running, and you see it looks pretty identical to what we have before. You can do the volume change, and here you can also adjust in the software the speed of the knobs, but I think that one works already pretty nice, the default setting. You can also close it down. You can also navigate here the scenes. It's also a bit problematic. But that's also a bit on Bitwig side to have a nice implementation for that. You can also have the normal navigation, but there you have the additional shift feature. So you can also do something like uh, the restart, for example, to create a clip. So the features you get here with Driven by Moss. So the basic things work the same. What is not working, you can currently not get into the device edit mode because the clear button, which I misused before to change the modes, which is no longer available. So we need to decide on which of the buttons to sacrifice to do mode changes. And remember, this is a protocol. I don't have access to shift or any of the buttons. I only get information the user wants to start playback, so something like this. And I also get information if it's with shift, I only get the info there is a restart message coming in. So I don't know about shift state or anything. So we need to have any of the shift combinations or of the normal combinations to do changing a mode. So I take ideas for that down in the comments below the video. What do you think how we could do that the best way to give you more features than this very, very limited set. We also cannot get currently to the send mode, which is also a feature I had on the clear button. Hmm. So we need to think about that as well. I'm also very curious. It's sad that this thing already supports MIDI 2.0. So I need to look into that as well because I'm very interested if this is working. Is also MIDI CI working? I don't think so. I have not heard about that, but that's also something I want to check out to see what benefits we can really have from MIDI 2.0 and especially here with the device. And I will work on having an update to Turin by Moss to bring more goodies here for that device. And stay tuned for next time. And until next time, make some funky music.